Hey, welcome to the Activate Masterclass. In this session, we're going to look at your assignment. You've spent now several classes discovering uh, what your calling is, coming up with a kingdom calling statement. You're probably in process on that now, but I wanna to talk to you. What does it look like today, maybe even tomorrow, to begin to live that thing out? Your calling consists uh, of your shape, understanding your fivefold wiring, what it looks like to steward and live out your prophetic words. Um, and now your assignment is, how do I begin to put those things into practice today and tomorrow? Many of us aren't living out the full extent of our calling in this season of life, but we're living out pieces of it and we're watching life build into what God has planned for us. Some of that makes the most sense in hindsight, where it's like we've got a little bit of clarity for the future enough to take a few steps, uh, but it really begins to come together as we walk in it. And so um, I want to uh, give you a, a few keys from the life of David that will help you live in faithfulness to your calling through your assignment in this season of life. But first, I want to take you to uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus, and he says in verse 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. I, I love that because it talks about how we're like this custom-made uh, masterpiece from God made in Jesus, actually to do good works. Your, your life matters that you would actually carry Jesus into wherever God's called you and that the result would be good works. But I love this last phrase that says, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So you and I, we're not trying to, to create uh, new works. We're not striving to produce life and fruit. Instead, we're abiding in him and he is bringing the good works our way. He's already prepared them and we just have to step into it. And so I just wanna take the striving out of this as we're talking about living, calling and vision and stewarding and all that kind of stuff. It's easy to get stuck in striving, but here's the truth. There's a grace on your life that is irrevocable, inescapable, and all you have to do is begin to walk in it in partnership with God. And the great piece is, the greatest part of the journey is that we're walking with God. It's not even about what we do, but it's about being with Him. And so let's let's take a look at, at the life uh, of David. Um, I think this is uh, some really key stuff. Some of this is from a book uh, called The Making of a Leader. And uh, if you, if you want to dig into that deeper, uh, I welcome you to. Um, but when we look at the life of David, what we see is that there are six stages. And I want you uh, to find yourself uh, in, in one of these stages, and it will begin to make sense of your calling as you do. When we look at David, we see sovereign foundations. You don't have any part of this. This is the family God put you in, the circumstances, the situations, and this begins to make much more sense um, after uh, you begin to walk out your calling a bit. And we, we see um, that a, a big takeaway from this part of life is that we learn to respond positively and take advantage to what God has laid in our foundations. I love what Romans 8, 28 says that God works all things for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purposes. It's not about who God loves because he loves us all, but in our love for God, it begins to lead us in relationship with him, that he actually works things for our good and for his glory. You know that God's for you and he's actually working for your good. And it doesn't say the good things, it says all things. And so what we find in this, this sovereign foundations season of our life is that there's some things we had no control over, some good, some bad, but God is going to use it all for good. Would you trust God to use even, use even the most difficult, um, even the most dark seasons of your past in order to set you up for uh, your good and his glory. Um, in this, uh, I begin to ask questions like, uh, how, my, how have my life experiences shaped me? Uh, how have they shaped who I am and what I'm passionate about? And how have they influenced my calling? You see, God's actually been setting you up all along the way. The, the second phase we see in David is uh, David as a shepherd. This is the, the inner life growth. You see, David, before he was ever uh, recognized and anointed as king, and well before he was appointed as king, he was cultivating something inside of him that would bear fruit for his life. He was living as a shepherd, and what we find is that as he was a shepherd, he was cultivating intimacy with God. He was writing songs and, and worshiping with God. He was taking advantage of what would be considered the lowliest of jobs and the most isolating of jobs, and he was cultivating something rich with God that would mold 
his character. You see, your character is, founda- is the foundation for your calling. Are you allowing God to shape your character in a way that he can build on that? Otherwise, whatever is built will crumble. My responsibility in this season is to, to live with humility. And as I embrace God and pursue him, what happens is, is that he begins to pour grace on my life. A couple of questions for you, uh, just to, to recognize what God was doing in this inner life growth growth phases, uh, to pay attention to when you gave your life to Jesus, and then where is God calling you to be faithful? You see, what David cultivated in that season sustained him uh, for a lifetime. And and so often we want to live out the grandness of our calling, but we won't cultivate something in the quiet place that will sustain us for a lifetime. Some of us are just in a season where we're cultivating intimacy with God that far outweighs anything that we would do for God. And then we see David enter this next phase, this maturing phase. And and in uh, this phase, we see David's life as a soldier. He's actually learning what it looks like. He's already been uh, anointed as king, but he's not yet been appointed as king. and, And he's learning what it looks like to live as royalty before he has the responsibility. And what we find in this season is that God's more concerned with who we are because a healthy lifestyle always flows out of who we are. Our responsibility when we're living in this season um, is to learn what abiding looks like, that I could be um, with God and then that I could live that out with integrity over a lifetime. A couple of questions for this phase is, am I staying connected to Jesus and where am I finding my worth and identity? Let me uh, tell you this, that as we begin to recognize the value uh, of our sonship and and really that our identity is as sons and daughters, as we begin to do that, it leads us uh, in a life-giving and sustainable way into the next seasons of our life. When we are willing to embrace the season that we're in and staying faithful to God with what he has entrusted to us today, tomorrow, what we find is that we're establishing a foundation that God can build with. We see David enter this next uh, season in his life. It's, It's when he's on the run from Saul, King Saul, who would have been a really good mentor, spiritual father for him, uh, or not for his envy and comparison, uh, begins to take out his insecurity on on David and uh, hunts him down, throwing spears at him, trying to kill him, assigning people to find him and kill him. And here's what we find in this season of life maturing while David's on the run, that every bit of of adversity is an opportunity for an upgrade uh, in our discipline for our destiny. You see, God's gonna use it all. So often we think that the goodness of God, the grace of God would keep us from hardship, but hardship is often about uh, cultivating and even cementing the character that God is developing in us so that as we step into our destiny, we can express who God has called us to be with integrity and a way that gives life. Um, And I know this about all of us, if we don't learn how to respond to adversity, then we're not going to be able to carry responsibility. A couple of questions for you in this phase is, uh, how do I respond to adversity? Am I a victim of my circumstances or am I victorious through adversity? Here's the season that all of us uh, want to be in, uh, season five or season six. Um, season five is divine convergence. That's where all of these things begin to make sense. They're all coming together. We see that promise that all things are working together for our good. We see this in David's life as king, that God begins to redeem the difficulty of his past so that it adds uh, incredible meaning for the future. What we find is that to live into this season well is that God is cultivating uh, faithfulness. My responsibility is to be faithful to the call of God on my life and what he trusts in me. Um, the question is, do I trust God's redemptive power is stronger than every scheme of the enemy. God begins to put all of these things together in David's life in a way that they make sense. Like he's with these 300 uh, men that are indebted and distressed and depressed. And and he begins 
to, to uh, pour into them so that they end up becoming his mighty men, the men who surround him and help him lead the nation of Israel. And, and what we find is that everything that uh, seems difficult begins to make sense in the future. And, and when we um, begin to live out our assignment in this season, what we find is that God uh, has has incredible meaning in everything that we experienced, and we begin to overflow our experience to others in a way uh, that they uh, give incredible life. This is the the last one, the one that we all hope to make it to, to live in. Um, it's it's legacy. We see this uh, in David's life. Um, it's the afterglow. It's the effect that his life has um, for future generations. Were it not for King David, then we would not um, be here today. He is the the many greats grandfather to Jesus. He, he had this incredible incredible uh, history and lineage, and we recognize this as we begin to think about legacy that it's really not about me that I'm living for and even loving future generations, that I'm building something that, that will well outlast my life on earth. And the question is, how do I steward what God has entrusted to me for the sake of nations and generations? You see, what we begin to recognize is that every little thing in my life matters because what happens is, is that it actually has an impact for the world around me. So here, here's some keys to living this out well, is that I, I know what God's called me to. I'm living with integrity and faithfulness, but I'm also willing to do the things that don't come easily, that I'm, I'm willing to, um, if I'm gonna fulfill my assignment for the season, that I'll step into the hard things, lean into the tough conversations, uh, serve in ways um, that, that don't come easy, that don't come naturally, because I'm not looking to be uh, comfortable, I'm looking to be shaped. And as you allow God to shape you in seasons, you'll, you'll be willing to do the hard things. And, and a big piece of this is understanding that, that as much as we're called to live a great life that uh, leaves a legacy, that it's, it's often in the little things that we leave a mark. It's, it's not just, hey, I don't just ask questions like, hey, does that fit into my calling? But hey, what does it look like to serve others and to lay down my life? for people. And so uh, a big part of fulfilling your assignment is serving in ways that don't come natural so that you can grow and see others built up. Because that's really a big part of your calling is to grow and to see other people built up. And so I, I hope this helps you dive in to the study guide and you'll get some more questions along the way that will help you uh, think through what does it look like uh, to offer now what God has done in me and what does it look like to do that in a way that even grows me uh, for what God has in my future.